just want to say, Dorothy, thank you so much for being part of the USWCA 75th anniversary. I had people say you have to interview Dorothy. And for people that are listening, and first of all, I'm grateful to be part of this celebration. I know a lot of people know you, but I would love for you to share something about yourself and how did you get into curling? And um, I know you're going to have some amazing stories. So welcome to the USWCA 75th anniversary celebration. Well, thank you very much for inviting me. So I have, I've been a curler for over 50 years and um, <laughs> I joined and I joined curling in 1970. And at, at that time in Schenectady, <clears throat> the, um, the women were not, were, were not members of the club. We were, we were, we could, play during the day. <clears throat> Most of the women who played were, um, were of course, the wives of curlers. And you had to be invited to join the club at that time. And that is, so we played during the day and we had a lot of ladies play and they played on, we played on Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. And we had, we have a four sheet club and we had a mostly, most of the sheets were taken. And so, so we, when I joined, of course, as I said, you had to be invited. So I, my husband had been invited and he wasn't too sure, but of course, being Scottish, I knew what curling was. So I walked into the club one day and probably because my, my accent, you know, someone said, oh yes, I will sponsor you. So that's how I joined the club. And um, as I said, we, we could only play during the day and we had a very strong women's organization. And, but we were, but, you know, well, we, but there was Friday night curling, but it wasn't, it was mixed. But of course, with all the bond spiels going around, you know, there wasn't too much for single women or for working women to play. So after about, um, after in the, that mid, I think it was the mid eighties, a lot of us the women, we said, well, we want to be full members of the club. So there were a few of the older gentlemen weren't too happy about it, but uh, finally, after I think it probably took a couple of years, they, the the board voted yet yeah, that the women would be full members. We would pay the full membership, and we got a uh, night. We got Thursday night that the women could curl, and so um, that was that was wonderful. We, and and since then we've had four women presidents of our club. So so. Um, it really it was a wonderful thing to happen like that and even so we went we were paying the same as the men and and, and that time there was only one night for maybe two nights for for mixed curling and another thing that i meant to say that i hadn't thought about before i remember the first time that um, the, the women of course were not to skip you know and the mixed curling and i remember the first time i skipped against the men some of the older ladies were not very happy about it <laughs> so um it has oh. changed now, and I'm so happy now that the way curling is now that it's it's everybody can play together the, from the very old or like you know, to the very young, and I I really think that a lot of the curling today is, is so much maybe better and open than it was before than when we couldn't do as you know we weren't really full members. So. You know, I'm so grateful to hear these stories because I have the good fortune of being able to curl whenever I want to. And just understanding the past of, of women like yourself who kind of paved the way to say, hey, I want to curl. I want to curl more. I want to be a member. You know, you set the standards or the foundation for us being able to enjoy curling with anybody and everybody whenever we want. So sincere thank you for that and paving the way for people like myself. I would also like to say that the USWCA was always there for us too. So that I, I've always been a supporter of the USWCA and I, so I think they were always um, promoting women's curling. And we always had a rep in our club who um, was all told, she told us, I mean, everything that went on. So we were always well aware of what was happening. And that's why we're here today is because of the USWCA. They brought us together because, again, they said, Deb, you've got to interview Dorothy and just share some of her stories. So, I mean, if we could just stay with the USWCA, you've been a member for 
quite some time. Tell us more about, I don't know, maybe some of your fondest memories from being associated with the organization, whether it's bond spiels, friendship, anything that you want to share. Because I think it's so important that people who are newer to the organization, while they see that there's tremendous offerings, the circuit, uh, opportunities to come together, there's a rich history in there. And I'd love for you to share something from your experience. Well, of course, I, I have met so many nice, wonderful people through the USWC going to bond spiels. And it's that you're friends for life. I mean, you might not see someone for a year and then you go to a bond spiel and there they are. And it's like you've never been apart. It's just, I've, just, I've just enjoyed the camaraderie of meeting all these different people over the, over the country. So one of my first, my first, bond, my first, um, Bond spiel, national bond spiel. I remember I, I, I went to, we, we went, we got a team together, four of us, and we went to Chicago to play. And this for, you know, I had not played, I'd played in the Grand National, you know, our area, but I'd never been into the Midwest playing. So that was quite an, an adventure playing in Chicago and going to different clubs there and meeting the women from that area. And of course, because the people in the Midwest have a longer curling season than we do, I don't think we did too well in that first pause field, but it was, it was so much fun. And then from that, that got me into the curling, to the bond field mode. So then from there, I'm afraid I've kind of gone to a lot of bond fields. <laughs> and that's the beauty of it. All, I, I just interviewed somebody a while ago, and uh, it just start by, come here. I need you on the team to up me. Yeah, we're going to go to compete up me. <laughs> and, you know, sometimes there's this beauty of just, we're going to send out the lure, reel you in. And the next thing you know, you're on the bond spiel circuit <laughs> and meeting all these amazing people. Um, yeah. I know because I never thought I'd go to Alaska, you know, like um, when they said that the, that the national was going to be in, in Alaska, I'm going... I said to my, you know, my, by then I had a t t four of us wanted to go together and I'd say, do you really want to go to Alaska? Yes, we'll go to Alaska. So we had a wonderful time in Fairbanks and I, I've even played in Iceland. <laughs> Oh my, <laughs> I have a lot to do in my curling career just to catch up to the likes of you. You know, we talked before and just for people that are listening, Dorothy has been a great sport. This is actually our second interview because technology didn't, uh, wasn't friendly to us last time, but you know, you told a wonderful story. I think about a bond spiel event that you were in, and I think you received some kind of trophy or an award. And there's a really interesting history or story behind that. If you could share that with us. Well, I'm very proud to say that I and my team won the USWC senior bond spiel. It was in Waltham, Illinois, which was also an interesting place to go. I don't know if you've ever been there. It's out and out in the wilds. <laughs> and um, so we won, we won the USWCA senior trophy. And when I got the trophy, it's a silver tea kettle. And I started to look at it, my team were looking at it, and we saw that, 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 that at the top of it, you know, it's a tea kettle, not, not one for boiling water for making your tea in. And it said that it was first presented to, I don't remember the gentleman's name, to a curler in, in Perth, Scotland. Now I am from Perth, I grew up in Perth, I consider Perth my hometown. And so, and all around the, around the edges, all around the, the outside was um, all these men's names and the teams that had won this trophy in the 1800s, I think the late 1800s. And so I was very intrigued with this and I was trying to find out more about this trophy. And one of the names I want to say on it was Muirhead. And of course, you know that the Scottish champion is Muirhead. So I, the next year I, I asked Dave Starr from, you know, from the USWC if she could figure out how this trophy got from Scotland to, to America and became a woman's trophy, but no one could tell me anything. So when I, I the following year, I went to visit, to visit Scotland and I took a copy of it because I couldn't take the trophy. So I took a copy with all the all the names and I went to the Perth ice rink to the curling where the curling is and they were so interested to see it um, because they were looking at all the names and the gentleman was saying I, I remember that the, the, the ancestor of this person is still curling and they're from Sapit Lockery and all things like that so 
I thought that was, but I still have not found out how it got over here. <laughs> but that is just part of the rich culture of the USWCA. You haven't taken it a step further to find the origins of an actual award that you uh, received and you actually got closer to the origin. <laughs> but, um, but that's amazing. And that's the reason why we wanted to connect with people like yourself who have been part of the fabric of the USWCA and just celebrate those wonderful stories that you have and we can preserve them. But before we bring this to a close, and I feel so enriched by having this conversation with you, are there any other stories or thoughts that you want to share with people who are going to watch and listen to this for the future? Well, I, 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 I can't think of it in the moment, <laughs> but I, I really am. Um... I've just enjoyed curling. It's been, it's something that seems to be inside you and you just um, enjoy meeting all the people. I enjoy the the ladies curling. I, I mean, I enjoy mixed curling too, but I especially enjoy, enjoy women's curling. And I do hope that the USWCA will continue in the, for the next 100, 200 years as, as their own organization. Because I think it's it's is I think nowadays there's um, I find it especially in our club that the women are not um, playing too much together. They're more into open curling and um, curling with this as a couple. And I think we really need to um, the, keep the tradition of women's curling going. All right. Well, thank you so much. Your words are very meaningful to me, and I know others will really enjoy this interview. I just want to wish you well, success, health, and continue to enjoy the sport of curling. Thank you so much, Dorothy, for your time. Thank you too, Deb.